Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is a morning market prep video for Tuesday, June 14th, 2022. Well, yesterday was certainly a rough day for the market as those bears really came to work, gapping the market lower taking out the lows of 2022 and putting significant pressure um, on the market as we wait on an FOMC rate decision and this morning producer prices. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we uh, settle in, let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Hey, before we get started, I want to let everyone know that tonight I am going to be doing a um, public e-learning class in the free trading room of the right um, of the Hit and Run Candlesticks uh, website. So if you go to hitandruncandlesticks.com, you'll see right at the top of the page free free room and you'll be able to log in there no password required and what i'm going to be talking about is properly placing credit spread trades and the reason i want to do that is for the for the members of right way options this has been an incredibly profitable year because we have been utilizing those um, credit spreads to avoid well i shouldn't say to avoid but to take advantage of the wild volatility and still put um, a pretty sizable amount of profit into our accounts um, dealing with this market. But the critical thing about credit spreads is knowing how to place them correctly. So we're going to talk about that tonight. And you guys are all invited 8 p.m. Eastern in the free trading room on the Hit and Run Candlesticks website. So let's take off here and um, let's crank this up and see if we can take a look at these charts and gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. First off, as you can see, we have now officially made a lower high followed by a lower low in the market and this morning we're looking at trying to bounce ahead of our ppi number but i think there's quite a little bit of uncertainty here in the market so first off one of the things we have to recognize is our downtrend remains intact and as long as the downtrend remains intact, we have to be respectful of resistance levels if we rally. So as we rally, you want to continue to think about this over and over and over. As long as this downtrend continues, we don't know where the bottom is going to be. As a matter of fact, we know that institutions, the big banks have targeted much lower levels than we're seeing right now in the market. Now we could rally back significantly in a relief, but as we approach resistance levels, make sure you respect that in the chart. Certainly our technicals are in a very bearish situation here, failing at um, our 50-day moving average, unable to quite make it back up there above the 50-day prices well below our 500-day moving averages. And you'll notice that our 34 EMA is pushing down here on the diamonds, could quickly cross down through that 500-day, creating a resistance zone here in price. And then notice that 50-day moving average is also moving in that direction to the downside. Now, if we look at the SPY, SPY had a real rough day yesterday again um, lower high lower low continuing the uh, downtrend in the market so once again if we can rally back we're going to want to be watching if those bulls can engage we'll want to be watching resistance levels maybe up in here that would be a significant rally as well um, um, could get that relief rally but that doesn't really change anything in the technical picture of these charts so be careful we also can't rule out the possibility that those bears could continue to push us um, down here um, with the numbers coming out this morning so we'll want to watch that close now keeping in mind our technicals here also very dismal our 34 ema 20 ema and 8 exponential are all crossing down through that 500 day moving average with that 50 day dropping pretty rapidly so a lot of work needs to be done here before we can recover now if we take a look at our qqq 
NASDAQ is also running into significant problems. And the, one of the reasons is these rising bonds continue to put pressure on the market. And they have a, um, a, a heavy, um, um, heavy weight, um, I guess I'll term it that way, to the to the Nasdaq stocks, um, tech companies tend to borrow a lot of money for their R and D and those kind of things, and so rising rates really put um, um, tremendous pressure on them. So watch this closely. Um, obviously, we have a substantial rally back just to test some resistance levels in the chart. And if we look at those technicals, these are really ugly technicals here on the chart. Our 500 day has already crossed down through the, or 50 day has already crossed down through the 500. We certainly have significant technical damage here in the chart. Um, and continuing that lower high, lower low uh, downtrending environment here in the market. If we take a quick look at our Russell, um, IWM um, didn't, didn't break all the way down. We came really, really close to, to breaking that support there yesterday, but ended up holding. But what we did do is in four days, we took back, you know, um, nearly a month of price action to build us back up. Um, so we're right back here testing these lows. We'll want to watch that closely. If this were, if the bears continue to engage and we were to fail this, that could obviously create some significant selling pressure here in this area because there's not a whole lot um, if you look out here um, this support if this support were to fail then you could really see us dropping maybe down to the lower side of that which is a significant um, sell-off for the Russell and if we take a look at, at our technicals here very dismal failing at our 50-day moving average um, just haven't quite made that lower low yet so um, ugly situation here for the market to deal with now if we take a look at our VIX our VIX spiked up substantially yesterday but the good news is if there is good news in the market we didn't break through this resistance level up here um, I have mentioned this several times before. I think if we break through this, if our fear spikes above this, we could really see a change of attitude from our institutions. And once we start seeing volatility up there, institutions tend to make some different decisions in um, how they manage their overall positions. And we could see some selling. The other thing we do have to worry about um, when we start to spike spear up, fear up like this, we can have that situation where those 401k holders, you know, folks that haven't really been paying all that much of attention to the overall market, they look at what's going on and they call their 401 company and they call their mutual fund companies and they say, get out, get me out, save my capital, get me out. And when that occurs, we can get what's called forced redemption in the market. So as bad as it is, it is possible that if that starts to happen, if those um, uh, 401k mutual fund investors capitulate, then we could pile on to some additional selling. So you want to kind of keep that in mind. That is possible. And um, if you want a look at that, go, go look at the 2008 sell-off when we had um, a significant relief rally back to the upside and then bang, um, we had that um, capitulation coming into play. That's where the real selling began. So watch that closely if we were to spike through that, that area. Um, let's take a look at our T2122. Now, if there was any reason for hope here today, it's our T2122. We are back down here in our bearish reversal zone. When we get down in here, we want to start looking for that possibility of a relief rally and that bounce back up to resistance levels. Unfortunately, today we have other factors that could continue to keep those bears engaged. So just like we can stay up here in a bullish reversal zone area for a period of time, we can stay down here 
in that bearish rever reversal zone for a period of time. And um, w we have to consider the fact that we could bounce up out of here at any point in time. But if those that data continues to uh, pile on and worry the investor, then we could linger down here in this area. So um, this gives us our best hope of a little bit of rally, but because of the data, it may still be a little problematic. If we take a look at our T2107, boy, this, this got beat up hard yesterday. We drove right down through, made new lows on our year, continuing to follow this downtrend pretty darn bearish with only 18% of our stocks holding above the 200 day moving average. Now, what that can say is we're so oversold that we could expect a bounce to occur any time. But at the same time, it, we've got that problematic data coming our way. So watch that close. And if we take a look at our T2108, T2108 didn't make new lows. So maybe fingers crossed a little bit of hope um, because we didn't make new lows, but I got to tell you only 14, 15% of our stocks holding above their 40 day moving average doesn't make for a bullish case, but it can say that we're so oversold that a relief could be on the way, assuming the data kit, you know, doesn't create more problems for us. Um, if we take a look at our T, uh, let's, let's 2101, T2101 bouncing up here um, on that fear spike here in the market. Notice we're running in this upside trend, but we've got this little downside trend in here, so we're a little bit wedged. Once again, if we were to spike up in through here on fear, that's where things could really get ugly fast. So watch carefully if that were to come into play. Momentum is certainly with the bears right now and we'll see um, if the data helps support them today or if those bulls have that opportunity to recover. If we take a look at our um, volumes, our volumes certainly spiked up here. So that that is a change. We've been running in these really low volumes. We're seeing those volumes spiking back up here as that fear comes into the market. So bulls definitely have control. Momentum is on their side. It really will depend on the data today, whether or not we can keep pushing um, down or if the bulls get a chance to relieve some of that pressure. If we take a look, what I've been alluding to all morning here is um, this situation. We have a producer price number. Producer prices are going to be about as influential, so influential to the market as we saw the CPI number. And expectations are that PPI also um, shows very high inflation. Remember, producer prices are very important because those are the prices that get pushed along to us um, as uh, folks, um, as companies make products. Um, those prices um, are really problematic for us as well. So we'll want to watch that closely today. Could be could be telling, could give us a little bit of that relief if it comes in better than expected. It could um, continue to weigh on prices and, and spike bond prices even more, or excuse me, bond yields even more if that comes in hotter than expected. We also want to keep in mind we've got an FOMC meeting uh, beginning today and there is a concern that the FOMC is going to become more aggressive, adding more pressure um, to that possibility of a recession. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. Remember, the Fed's credibility is on the line here. Um, they have lost control of inflation. And that's one of their major mandates. They've lost control of it and they're going to have to get this under control. So don't expect the Fed to suddenly become soft on the market. Um, they're going to um, start being much more aggressive and sticking with that to bring that inflation down or they lose that credibility. Now, also keep in mind as you're planning forward tomorrow, boy, we've got a big day. Um, retail sales could definitely be a market moving number. We're gonna be followed by quite a few um, additional numbers that have that potential to move us. Petroleum status and of course, tomorrow afternoon, the FOMC and the Fed chair's comments, um, all of that could really keep us on the edge of our seat and guessing as prices 
um, are likely to remain quite volatile. So be careful, even if we do rally today, thinking that the all clear has been sounded, because unfortunately that could be just, um, if we do get a relief rally, just the next setup for more pressure to the downside. So watch carefully. And then if we take a look at our earnings calendar today, our earnings pretty light. Um, not too much concern in there on the earnings calendar. Because I'm running a little bit long here, guys, I'm not gonna really cover these. Um, and, and the reason is most of them are those small caps that probably aren't gonna be too notable. But if you click the link below the title of the video, that'll take you back and you can pick up those notables, um, somewhat notables for today on the earnings calendar. It's gonna be all focused in here on the worry of recession, bond yields, and of course that PPI number this morning. Let's take a look at um, some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find them to be worthy, um, the, the videos to be helpful to you on your planning of your trading day. If you could please do me that favor and click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow. And thank you so much for the folks that are going through and clicking the thumbs, thumbs up buttons on um, other comments in there. That does help a lot. And I think that's a very nice thing to do. So thank you very much everyone for, for doing that. And once again, thanks for everyone who supports the channel through buy me a coffee. That link again is below the title of the video. Now, something I want to um, let everyone know, um, I will be taking a little bit of, a, of vacation. Um, of my, um, my dad is turning 80 and um, we're going to go celebrate his birthday. I haven't seen him. I haven't been in the same room with him for about 12 years so it's about time I go um, I go do that so next Friday I will not be here um, there will not be a video on Friday you'll want to keep in mind that next Monday is a national holiday Juneteenth and so the market will be closed but then I there won't be a morning prep video Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday of next week. But I will be back right after that. Now, don't be surprised if I don't drop in and, and, and drop a little video um, a conversation about the market. But um, just kind of keep in mind uh, that I will be mostly focused on a little bit of vacation time um, there. So I apologize for being gone, um, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to navigate without me. Let's take a look at um, these stocks that could be setting up for today. And remember, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to do your own due diligence. Make sure you're being very, very careful. This is a dangerous market. And I'm only showing these as just kind of habit. It It's really something that I want to recommend that everyone just kind of really protects that capital and tries not to get involved in um, the volatility that we're likely going to experience here because it could be very, very costly to your account. So first off, let's take a look at a few companies that, you know, have some interest in here that um, honestly did a pretty good job yesterday. We're we saw a little bit of defensive sector um, perking up here. Take a look, uh, Coca-Cola picking up. Remember when the market gets spooky, when it gets scary, when things start falling apart, there can be that uh, that move where we say, well, what are we going to need? What are we going to have to have? Um, um, and that's going to be food and staples and things like that. Now, I'm not saying Coke is a necessity, necessity for um, us to sustain ourselves, but um, certainly we had a nice little bounce in Coca-Cola. We saw um, Schmuckers make a, a pretty good bounce yesterday, ended up pulling back at the end of the day. But 
um, we're starting to see a little bit of that defensive sector perk up. So if you're looking for something to put on a list and start watching, you might want to look at some of those defensive sector stocks. We also, it was kind of interesting yesterday, we saw Domino's, Domino's picking up here. So maybe um, Domino's Pizza is one of those staples of the market. I don't know. But as you can see, we're trying to break through this downtrend and break a little bit higher here. I'm holding support. So keep an eye on Domino's. That was kind of an interesting move yesterday, trying to perk up. You might also want to be keeping an eye on some short trades. You know, as we rally back, guys, as, as we push back up, we might want to be keeping an eye on some of these charts that, um, well, doggone it, um, not looking so good here. Uh, uh, despite all of the hype and, and everything about AMD, um, just getting ready to go to the moon, you can see that uh, we've broken trends. So any rally back here to resistance could be that next opportunity to find those short trades. And we're going to find a lot of those here in the market. Um, poor old Apple, um, despite you know, the fact that they make tons and tons of money and they're a very good, strong company. Um, you can see that we're continuing to get punished here in those charts, um, breaking support, maintaining downtrends. So as we rally back in these charts, there may be that next opportunity to um, to pick up some short trades here in the market. Now, if you're a longer term investor, longer term holder, you might want to start looking at companies that you could consider to be truly way oversold. And that might be Apple, it might be Microsoft and things like that. But what I would do is I wouldn't speculate too much. I might nibble in here with just a few shares just to keep an eye on it. But I don't think I would be rushing in to buy up a bunch of positions here in the market. Another place you may want to um, keep an eye on um, these shippers, you know, like FedEx and UPS, um, clearly we're going to need them. And our current market setup or our current consumer setup is we get most everything shipped to us nowadays right to our home. So keep an eye on these stocks. We're certainly going to need them. And if things start turning around, I could certainly see um, FedEx and UPS start to recover pretty quickly quickly if we start um, feeling just a little bit lighter about um, the market. Um, one of the things as I close up this video today, guys, I, I want to remind you all that we don't have to trade. Remember when the market is this uncertain, when it's um, ranging all over the place, these big dangerous moves in the market, remember cash is a position. Keeping that cash in your account and avoiding the risk in a market like this can sometimes be one of the best decisions you make as a trader. When this is over, when the selling is done, when the when the when the bear market finishes up, there's going to be great deals. So don't lose your capital during that process of fighting the bear on the way down. Let it let it occur. Let the institutions um, make those decisions and they will. They'll eventually start supporting these prices again and then it's going to be some really good trading um, in the market when it's over. But this is going to take some time I think so be kind of careful. So with that everyone I want to wish you all the very very best today. Hope to see you tonight 8 p.m. Eastern for that um, credit spread class. Um, and I want to wish you all the very, very best today. Take care, everyone. Have a good one.